A faded cloth bears the eerie negative image of a crucified man. Could this controversial relic truly be the burial shroud of Jesus Christ himself? Or is it one of history's most audacious frauds? The Shroud of Turin. I'm Julius, and unraveling the truth behind this enigmatic artifact has fascinated me for years. To some, it is the genuine burial shroud of Jesus Christ himself. To others, an elaborate hoax. The shroud story begins in 14th century France, in the days of knights and castles. In 1357, a French knight named Geoffrey de Charny brought a long linen cloth to the village of Liray, claiming it wrapped the body of Jesus Christ after the crucifixion. But the local bishop denounces it as a fake. Despite the controversy, the shroud becomes wildly popular with pilgrims seeking a tangible connection to the divine. When Geoffrey dies, the relic passes to his granddaughter, Margaret. To escape the ravages of war and plague, Margaret moves the shroud to Chambéry, France in 1453. But disaster strikes when a fire rages through the church housing the precious cloth. Molten silver from the melting reliquary burns holes and scorches the fabric. In 1578, the damaged shroud arrived in Turin, Italy, where it remains to this day, guarded in the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. For over three centuries, only the pious and privileged are permitted to glimpse the enigmatic cloth. But in 1898, the world truly saw the shroud for the first time, thanks to a new invention, photography. When Italian photographer Secondo Pia develops his film, he discovers a negative image of a bearded man bearing the wounds of crucifixion. The face eerily resembles artistic depictions of Jesus. Could Pia's photograph substantiate the shroud's authenticity? Let's scrutinize the evidence. On the surface, we see a negative image of a tortured man consistent with crucifixion. Bloodstains suggest wounds from nails in the wrists and feet, as well as a spear wound in the side, matching biblical accounts of Jesus' crucifixion. Despite the violence inflicted on his body, the man's face remains serenely peaceful. Modern forensic analysis supports the idea that the shroud wrapped a torture victim. Pollen samples place the cloth's origins in the Middle East, not medieval Europe, as skeptics claim. The weave and fabric match linens from first-century Israel. Rare pollen spores found near the Sea of Galilee exist only around Jerusalem, where Jesus died. Most strikingly, the blood type matches the universal donor AB, consistent with other relics attributed to Jesus Christ. But glaring inconsistencies seed doubt. In 1988, carbon dating by three independent laboratories places the shroud's origins between 1260 to 1390 CE, firmly in the Middle Ages. Proponents argue the sample came from repaired sections, skewing the results. Additional testing by other scientists dates the shroud much earlier, but the debate rages on. Even more mysterious is how the image formed. No paints, pigments, or brushstrokes appear. Ultraviolet examination reveals microscopic particles unlike typical artistic materials. Encoded in the stain patterns lurk eerie 3D characteristics beyond medieval capabilities. Some theorize a chemical reaction with a corpse created the imprint. Skeptics cry fraud. The faithful proclaim a miracle. But the question remains tantalizingly unresolved. Perhaps the shroud hovers beyond science's reach. To believers, it remains a profoundly sacred symbol of Christ's passion, bringing them closer to the divine mystery of resurrection. They see not a relic, but a revelation that renders the divine tangible. For now, the truth eludes us. After centuries of study, the Shroud's mysteries endure. We are left with more questions than answers. Is it a pious medieval forgery or Christianity's most astounding archaeological find? We each must draw our own conclusions. Now let us dive deeper into the evidence surrounding this controversial artifact, both for and against its authenticity as the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. First, let's examine the nature of the cloth itself. The Shroud of Turin consists of a fine herringbone twill weave made of flax fibrils, matching linens produced in the Middle East at the time of Jesus. The fabric bears clear watermarks, and the imprint of a rare three-to-one herringbone pattern used in ancient Syrian linen production. This places its origins in the exact time and place required for authenticity. Pollen samples provide vital clues about the shroud's history. Max Frey, a renowned criminologist, analyzed dust particles vacuumed from the fabric surface. He identified 58 different pollens, of which 45 originate exclusively from plants in regions around Constantinople and ancient Israel. 
Significantly, oak pollen found near the feet suggests the body emanated from the environs of Jerusalem. Pollen from a rare plant called Gundelia tournaforti, growing exclusively by the Sea of Galilee, also appears. The evidence points to a Middle Eastern origin, not 14th century France. Let us turn to the bloodstains, perhaps the shroud's most striking feature. Forensic hematological tests confirm the stains are real human blood, not pigments. Blood typing identifies it as AB, perfectly consistent with other ancient blood relics attributed to Jesus Christ. The blood marks correlate precisely with crucifixion wounds, including punctures at the wrists and feet, unlike typical artistic depictions. Travertine aragonite deposits around the wounds suggest clotting, indicating the man was alive at the time of injury. Everything aligns flawlessly with the gospel accounts of Jesus' crucifixion. Yet troubling questions persist. In 1988, three independent carbon dating tests placed the shroud's origins between 1260 to 1390 CE, firmly medieval. However, critics argue the sample came from damaged sections repaired in the 16th century, skewing the results. Textile experts confirm the material was woven on an antique loom, predating the Middle Ages. Additional microscopic and chemical analysis date the shroud between 280 BC and 220 AD, supporting authenticity. The heated debate continues. Even more mysterious is how the shroud's image formed. The negative imprint has depth and detail unmatched by medieval artistry. No evidence of applied pigments, paints, or binders appear. Instead, a superficial sheath of carbohydrate residues colors the microfibrils, as if the cloth mysteriously scorched itself. The image encodes enigmatic 3D information beyond medieval capabilities. Some suggest a chemical reaction with the decomposing body created the imprint. Believers credit a miraculous burst of radiant energy at the moment of resurrection. Skeptics cry fraud, unable to explain the phenomenon. The question remains tantalizingly unresolved. If you'd like to support our channel, please consider subscribing. For those of faith, the shroud remains a profoundly sacred symbol of Christ's passion, bringing them closer to the divine mystery of resurrection. They see not just ancient blood-stained linen, but a revelation that renders God's promise tangible. Yet science alone cannot definitively prove whether the shroud truly wrapped the crucified body of Jesus Christ or is instead merely a product of human artifice. After centuries of rigorous inquiry, the search continues for definitive answers. We are left to draw our own conclusions on the authenticity of this most holy of relics. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Now let's delve deeper into the theories and findings surrounding the formation of the shroud's mysterious image. This is perhaps the greatest enigma of all, as the image possesses unique characteristics seemingly beyond medieval capabilities. The shroud's ghostly negative imprint has visual depth and detail unmatched by medieval artistic methods. No evidence exists of applied pigments, paints, stains, or binding media. The blood marks have not been applied as wet clots or by an artistic brush. Instead, microscopic analysis reveals a thin sheath of oxidized, dehydrated carbohydrate residues coloring the cloth's microfibrils, almost like the linen scorched themselves. Curiously, the image encodes abstract 3D information, unlike typical 2D paintings of the era. Analyzing the light and dark patterns allows reconstruction of a mysterious topographic relief map of the man's form. The stains penetrate only the topmost microfibers, rather than soaking through the entire fabric. It is as if some phenomenon selectively discolored the cloth only at the points where it hovered millimeters above the body's contours, just enough to capture superficial impressions. Bafflingly, no medieval artist possessed the advanced understanding of optics and 3D modeling required to produce such an image. What possibly could have created this enigma? Hypotheses abound, but firm conclusions remain elusive. Some suggest a form of proto-photography with the linen cloth acting as a primitive film, capturing the man's imprint via light projection. Experiments show a short vertical exposure to a strong light source can produce images with similar qualities. Yet replicating all the shroud's unique features, such as perfect resolution of both front and back views, has proven technologically challenging. Other theories involve vapors, radiation, or heat as the imaging mechanism. Some imagine the shroud acted like a medieval photograph developing plate. Perhaps chemical reactions between burial ointments and bodily fluids produced the stains when exposed to ambient humidity and heat. Or maybe radiation and electrical discharge from the body 
interacted with the linens at the moment of resurrection, as believers suggest. Without finding the actual tomb of Jesus, it seems unlikely science could definitively explain the shroud's genesis. Radiocarbon dating provides no consensus, and the imaging process remains scientifically inexplicable, almost miraculous. In the end, faith may be required to accept the full authenticity of this sacred cloth. The enigma endures. The Shroud of Turin reminds us that, at the precipice of human knowledge, faith and science must coexist, neither entirely explaining the full complexity of our mortal world. We are left to draw our own conclusions on this holy relic, whose mysteries continue to both mystify and fascinate. I'm Julius, thanking you for pondering the provocative intersections between religion and science. Until our next encounter, stay curious, my friends.